But now I want to get you guys a little bit of excitement, a little bit of motivation. I want to tie in some of the obstacles and uh, challenges you guys have had prior to coming to this event. It's very important. So let's get started. I'm going to combine a bunch of these here. I'm going to read them off to you real quick. Time management, procrastination, fear, confidence, laziness, comfort zone, when to quit job, accountability, and who do you think you are? These are very critical to your success. Do you guys really see how overcoming these challenges, you really can take your business to the next level? Very important, right? All right. First one we'll go over is time management. Anybody in here waste time? Two hands for, <laughs> for Bob. <laughs> oh, two hands over here too. Absolutely. Here's some time management strategies that are very, very important. Number one, write down, for one day, just write down what it is that you believe you've wasted some time throughout the day. So in other words, at the end of your day. I, I asked a few people earlier if you journal. And I, few, only a few people answered answer that question. I would recommend that you do some journaling before you go to bed. Anybody not, be, not able to sleep at night sometimes because they're all excited or as well as worry and fret on their mind about stuff, right? Either way, that's usually what happens when you go to bed. It's one way or the other. It takes a little while to relax, either if you're worried about stuff or if you're excited about stuff, right? That's why you'll see um, the majority of the time conference calls are done uh, during the day versus at night because you do a conference call, you get pretty wound up after a conference call at night. You don't want to go to sleep. So uh, that's why we do conference calls in the day sometimes. All right. So at the end of the night, write down what you believe you did that wasted your day. But include this, number two. Include who was it in your life that wasted some of your time that day. Because we're guilty ourselves of wasting time, correct? But aren't we also guilty for allowing others to steal our time? Who has people in their life that steal their time? Whether it's a mobile call, cell phone call, or face-to-face, -face, or somebody at work? Absolutely. All of what I'm talking about right now ties into time management. Because who's in control of your 24 hours in a day? Who? You. Absolutely. Why would you allow someone to steal your time? Probably because of one of the things up on the board, confidence. You don't have the confidence in yourself to say, no, exactly. So we'll allow others to take control of our time and say, talk about what? Usually it's negative stuff, right? And that negativity that we allow in our ears to infiltrate our heart or mind keeps us down and prohibits us from moving forward and taking the next step, doesn't it? Absolutely. So, time management. Don't allow people to take your time. So we've got to build up your confidence to say some things that you normally wouldn't say. So tell me, what are some of the things you think about when somebody's wasting your time in a conversation? What kind of self-talk goes on in your head? Anyone want to volunteer? What goes on in your mind? Yes, grab the microphone. Well, if I'm having a conversation on the phone that's going way longer than I want it to, I'm just waiting for them to take a breath so that I can say, you know, <laughs> I, I need to get off here. Mm -hmm. But well, that's usually what I'm thinking about is I need to hang And then it goes up. on and on and on and on and on, right? So mm -hmm. we think about We've got to say something, and we want to break that pattern of that person and just end it because we don't want to. But usually we don't want to offend them, right? That's why we do, we do that. What else? Sometimes I do waste time because I think that probably I will make a deal maybe later, one other time. So you're thinking later on there's a possibility something could happen, right? Okay, fair enough. Anybody else want to share? Yes, James. I would say uh, being afraid to leave your comfort zone. You think, well, hey, this is what I've always known. Uh, I would say that's the number one thing when it comes to exchanging your time for dollars, working for a living. That's the way uh, most of us have been uh, trained. True. 
Definitely true. So what, is, what do we want to tell that person that's wasting our time? What would you really want to say to that person? Anybody want to muster up something? I mean, it's safe and secure in here. <laughs> that person isn't in here, so you won't offend them. What would you like to say to that person? Anyone? Go ahead. I knew Frank would grab the mic. Go ahead. That's the reason why I divorced you. I don't really want to listen to you anymore. <laughs> That's strong. Very good. Anyone else? Anyone have a good friend that uh, you kind of pacify them by allowing them to listen to, you know, you listen to stuff. Anyone have people like that in their life? Absolutely. So here's the exercise, guys. Whatever you think in your mind, this is what I want you to transfer onto paper to take home from here. Whatever you're thinking in your mind, like, oh, boy, this is a complete waste of my time. That's what I want you to say because... I know at first, maybe some of you might be saying, well, that might offend my friend. But in reality, what you're doing is you're giving, what you tolerate, you accept, correct? Therefore, what it is, is you're giving your friend or an acquaintance, associate, the license to continue on with the nonsense on the phone, which ultimately is doing what? Wasting your time. So whatever you're saying in your mind, such as, oh, this is a complete waste of my time, I want you to try it. Just say it once to someone. When you're on the phone and say, excuse me, and fill in the blank, the person's name, it sounds to me like you're complete. This, this is a complete waste of time to talk about this. It will break their pattern because this is what you're saying to yourself, isn't it? Right? It's a complete waste of your time. So say it. And the person's going to say, well, why do you say that? And then you could say, because all we're talking about is negative, something that's negative, something that has nothing to do about moving us forward in a positive light. It's amazing when, when it's somebody you know that you care about and you say it one time, the results you get. What do you think the results would be? Right away, you guys probably thought they'd be mad, right? Absolutely. At first, they may be mad. But you may catch the right person at the right time that comes back and says, thank you. Thanks for telling me that, telling me the truth. Because it is the truth, isn't it? And what do we know about the truth? The truth shall what? Absolutely. So say it. It's the truth. It's a fact. They're wasting your time. And you know what that does after you do it one time? It builds confidence, doesn't it? Then you have the, um, you're empowered to say it the next time and the next time. And then you get even more confident so that when you're sitting here face to face with a conversation with someone and you're engaged in a conversation in a networking environment, even maybe one like this, and someone's talking nonsense, you end up having the confidence to say, excuse me, but I really don't want to continue this conversation if you choose to, con to talk about this negative whatever. I, I do not want to surround myself with negative information. If you have something positive you want to talk about, I'm all in. Let's do it. Does that make sense? This takes care of a few of the steps of gaining back control of your time. And ultimately, that's how you manage your time in one area. Here's the next big area that you should be managing your time. You should be writing down at least three, maybe as many as six key things before you go to bed of what you need to accomplish the next day. And when you do, it's amazing how you can start checking them off. And here's how. Those six things got to be resonant with you. They got to be in front of you, whether it's in your planner or in your PDA. It's got to be in front of you, and here's why. How many of you currently have a full-time job? Raise your hand. A few people. Great. Currently, right now, you probably work harder for your full-time job than you do on your own future, correct? Who wants to be truthful? Absolutely. Can you explain to me how you came to that psycho psychological mindset? It makes no sense. <coughs> However, I understand the mindset. If you don't show up to work, what's going to happen? Day after day after day, ultimately, you'd grab your job's gone. And everyone has bills to pay. And everyone has to eat. And everybody has to take care of family, etc. I understand that. Let's focus on the mindset of taking care of those six things throughout the day or three things throughout the day. Imagine if 
your business, your real estate business ends tomorrow if you don't take care of those things. Imagine the mindset. What would happen? Would you have a little bit more urgency of your day to make sure those things take get uh, those things happen? How about scheduling them into your day? Is there one of them that can be done during your lunchtime hour? How many of you go to lunch with coworkers when you're at the job? Anyone? A couple people? Great. I'm sure that you have great, stimulating, positive, impactful in conversation, right? <laughs> Something that's going to move you forward. Well, here's my bottom line. What I'm getting to is, imagine if you had income-producing activities for your day, such as if you have lunch, make sure that you're using your lunch time for income-producing activities, such as one or two of those items on your list, you can knock them off. Now you're making progress. You're managing your time because you only have 24 hours in a day, right? How many people listen to talk radio or music in the car to and from work? Who's truthful? So you guys completely waste your time on the way to work. Excellent. I mean, really, what value is there in that when you could create more value for yourself if you're listening to positive inspirational material? Right? CDs, an iPod, any kind of material. Does anyone speak, uh, have any affirmations that they speak on a daily basis? They're over your desk. Great. Imagine if you said them over and over again in the car. What if you recorded that onto your iPod? Every, anyone have an iPod or MP3 player? A few people? You know, you can record on that. Record it and listen to it over and over again. It will inspire you. It also puts you in position to win for the day because it, you're not going to take care of these income-producing activities, this short list of three or six things you must do in a day, unless you're inspired and motivated. And right now, you can't have or myself on your shoulders with you 24 hours a day. So you have to take control of your day. And this is one way to manage your time properly. So do you like those few nuggets there? Can you take them home and apply them? Because at the end of the day, you don't get it back, do you? Another thing, the last thing I want to cover for time management is, everybody write this question down. For, and this is a question for yourself. The question is, what's at stake for me in my life? What's at stake for me in my life? You know what that means? If I allow each day to go by and not do something that's income producing that moves me one step closer to accomplishing my financial goals, my life dream, whatever it is, then you don't get that day back. And what ultimately happens, you end up being 95 years old, 105 years old, 125, whatever age you believe you're going to live to, sitting on a porch on a rocking chair going like this, back and forth, going, I wish I coulda, woulda, and shoulda. Nobody wants to end up like that. However, we have cemeteries all across this United States that's full of people who died full. I want to live my life, I don't know about you, where I die empty. I gave it all. I gave my time. I gave, my, gave so much to myself. I managed my time well. I put the right people around me. I made the right decisions. When you understand what's at stake for you, it's called negative motivation. I like to use negative motivation with time management because it enables me to make better decisions throughout the day on what I'm choosing to do with my time. Time really is a gift. That's why we call it the present, correct? It's a gift today. You wake up, it's a gift. Time, you've got 24 hours. However, tomorrow is not guaranteed, is it? So it's very, very important to manage your time properly. Anyone have any questions about Time management, I know it's on every one of these sheets around the board here, on the wall. Yes? What if you're your own worst time waster? Mm. Ergo surfing the internet. That's a great question. I believe you have two kids, right? You'd never knowingly hurt those two kids, would you? Oh, definitely not, right? What if you, since surfing the internet is a place where you completely waste your time, if you, unless you're doing 
income producing activities, which might be searching, looking for investors, etc., then how about putting two pictures of your kids right there on your monitor off to the side and create an anchor that says, in your mind, I'm stealing from my kids because I'm wasting time. Because you can't, you cannot provide for your kids the way you want. You want more for your kids, don't you? you can't, so, that, so that's one way. Another way is, say to yourself, you know what? Every single time I catch myself wasting time, I'm going to go to my little girls and say, what's your girls' names? What, what are your, I'm sorry, boy and girl names? Jock and Lourdes. Jock, Lourdes, we get down on one knee, because I think they're five and seven, right? Get down on one knee and say, please forgive Daddy for completely wasting some time today and stealing from your future. Now, it's a, it's a difficult exercise to go through, but it's an image I just put in your mind. Imagine you doing that and looking your two kids in the eyes. And if that's what it takes to get you to stop wasting time, then you have to create that anchor in your life. And that goes for everyone else. Everyone's different. Everybody has a situation like that. The bottom line is it's up to you to create that solid anchor so that you don't become your worst enemy. Or go uh, on a front porch somewhere. Anyone have Cracker, bar cracker Barrels around where they live? Anyone ever hear that restaurant, Cracker Barrel? Okay. Or a type of restaurant where they have those little uh, rocking chairs in the front. Cracker Barrel does. That's how I know. Go through a powerful exercise. Take yourself, sit in the rocking chair, close your eyes, don't go by yourself, and just sit there and rock. Maybe it only takes you five minutes, maybe it takes you 15, maybe as long as 30 minutes. Think of your life, fast forward your life to the point where you're sitting in that rocking chair visualizing yourself because now you're actually rocking, right? And you're going, I'm ready to pass on, I'm ready to go home, and boom. I wish I coulda, woulda, and shoulda. Because now you have the opportunity to take control of your time and make it happen. Don't you? So does that help? Assist you? All right, anything else on time management before I roll on here? 